talk us through your impressions of the 90 minutes of extra time and how you saw the ebb and flow of what was ultimately a nil-all draw. I saw Australia dominate the first 25 minutes. And, and what I mean by dominate, they, they pressed them really well. And they didn't allow Peru any time on the ball. They pressed high. And I think that's one of the reasons why he, he started Mitch Duke up top, because we know his energy, we know what he can bring that way. Um, and, you know, they, they, they put Peru a little bit on the back foot. So then they, what happens with the players, especially the Peruvians, is that they have that perceived pressure all game. They think, shit, Australia work hard. They, 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 they're they're going to they're gonna make it hard for us. So they didn't allow them to get into the game. There was probably only about a five, ten minute spell in the first half that Peru started to gain a little bit of territory with the ball, and so that, but they didn't create any chances. I'm not saying we created clear cut chances, but we were the better side. I thought Martin Boyle in the first half um, was our most dangerous player going at the, the defenders and uh, you know he got past them a couple of times. Um, and then in the second half, again, we, we, we started to uh, gain uh, momentum and, and gain territory. I thought Awamabil made a good impact when he came on. We had the best chance with uh, Hristic. I thought that um, you know that was unlucky. He, he probably didn't connect it the way he would have liked, but he got into a good position. I thought Hristic grew into the game. He didn't start the game that well. Um, in terms of getting on the ball as much. Moy was, I thought Moy, he, he controlled the game. I thought Moy was the one that really uh, was able to get on the ball a lot, dictate the tempo of the game. Um, and and then, you know, we, we were the better team in the 90 minutes. I think Swartzy mentioned that the second half of extra time was the only time that we felt a little bit under pressure. They hit the post and they had a, 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 another half chance, but... You know, all in all, our back four was very good. Uh, Kai Rolls was excellent. Um, Aziz Beach was excellent. You know, we, we were questioning if uh, Atkinson, uh, he got a card early on, and that can also play, you know, it, it put doubt in your mind. But after that, he was he was calm, he was comfortable. Bailey Wright was good. So all in all, was a good, very good performance. Probably one of our best performances for a long time. And I, I still think it's because we are physically better than them. That's why we are able to do that. I th- I also think um you know back back four were were very very good. I thought though in midfield we completely dominated the game uh, for large parts of it. I I thought the work rate of Lecky, Irvine, Boyle was exceptional. Moy like you said controlled lots of the game. Hristic was the one player that yes, he wasn't as good as he was against UAE, but every time he gets the ball you think something's going to happen. His one touch football is actually on a different level. I think to everyone on the, on the football pitch, uh, certainly on the Australian side, um, there was times in the, later on in the game he probably overplayed that one touch. He should have probably held the ball a little bit more. But I I, I, st- I still think he's he's a cut above the rest with Aaron Moy there in the, in that side in midfield. But the work rate of the other guys was was exceptional, and I thought that work rate in midfield also, and also obviously Mitchell D- Duke up front helped alleviate a lot of pressure off our back four. We, we didn't have the pressure because of the work rate that was put out in front of them. Um, they they nullified the Peruvians a lot. They put them under pressure, like Johnny said. They forced a lot of errors from the Peruvians, which I, I had to double take a few times thinking, hang on, what, what is going on with this team? Like, they are way off it. They, they, they were very disappointing. If I'm sitting there from a neutral perspective, I'm watching the game thinking, this is a really poor Peruvian, uh, Peru side. I was blown away by actually how how bad they were. I thought Australia were, were very good on the day. Not our best performance, but I thought they did a really, really good job. We talked about it last week. Get the job done. Do what you have to do to win the game. And I thought they did what they had to do. We had a little bit better moments of, of I think, a little bit, little bit slightly better quality than last week, even though we scored two goals last week. The only thing is, again, is that final, that final touch. I thought Jackson Irvine got in a really good couple of positions. But that final bit of quality was missing. Um, and But overall, I thought Australia played well. And we mentioned it, I mentioned it earlier on, deserved it. And um, and yeah, full credit to them. Mark, you've touched on it there, though. Peru's approach to the game. In the first half, my mind immediately turned to they are playing with the handbrake on. They are thinking 120 minutes. But as the game went on, and Ricardo Gareca, the cutaways to him, he's getting angrier outwards to the field, inwards to his bench, his assistants and, and his bench players. Why is it that he was unable to change the game state 
And how much credit do we give Australia for the way we approach the game and how much do we criticise Peru, uh, much like we criticise the UAE, for not actually being able to take the initiative and not really until the second half of extra time even significantly threaten the Australian goal? I think there's a combination of things. Johnny touched on it earlier on about preparation and that's 100% right. Peru underestimated how difficult the conditions are going to be. Yes, in, a, in an air-conditioned stadium it's different, right? I wish we had that when we were playing. I mentioned it last week as well, but we didn't. But it's the training. It's the app. It's the the you know when they when they arrive at the airport, when they go to the hotel, it hits you. It hits you like a, a brick wall. The the humidity or, or the heat. Um, so those guys would have been, oh my god, this is this is far worse than any of us kind of expected it to be. Um, there was a couple, obviously, I think there's a couple of the guys who are based in the Middle East anyway. But still, unless they experience it, I think they got that wrong, that timing. Um, I think the players struggled with the with the conditions with the preparation they looked leggy they looked um i also think they watched the uae game and thought we've got this in the bag i i think they underestimated us i think they thought they were going to win the game comfortably and you're right the manager started off being frustrated but after about 20 minutes he he was angry and every time he was biting he was getting worse and worse and throwing his hands up in the air, couldn't explain, couldn't understand why they were so far off the pace. And I think there's that, that combination, preparation and underestimating us or, or, or going in there complac- with complacency, thinking we're going to win this game easily. Yeah, they haven't qualified back-to-back World Cups for a long time. And so, you know, the pressure would have been there for them. And, and you know, we, t- we spoke about preparation at length, but also we can't underestimate the pressure that they would have felt, you know, that uh, oh, we should be beating Australia. You know, I've been uh, hearing, and it was on Optus Sport, you know, about their, or the journos, you know, that we're going to beat Australia easy and, uh, you know, Australia kangaroos and they're jumping around, you know, making fun of us. And, and and, and it, it brought me back to, you know, a Uruguay that, you know, said divine right to qualify. And, and you go, you know what? It's a dangerous game they're playing. It's a dangerous game. It doesn't matter who you're playing against, who you're up against. You underestimate them. Um, you don't analyse them enough. Uh, you don't respect them enough. They, they can come and hurt you. And uh, and that, that, that would have played a bit of a part in that because they would have gone after 25 minutes and said, this is not easy. We're, we're, we're in for a real fight here. And once you, you don't start well, it's hard to change gear. You know, the, your legs still feel heavy. You need a, a moment that makes you get energy from somewhere. Now, that moment never came from it. You know, usually it's a goal, of course. It gives you a bit of energy and, and you get a lift. It, you know, it might be a tackle. It might be a little bit of a scuffle. They didn't even have that. They didn't have a scuffle at all during the game to give them something, to give them a lift. You know, they had the crowd behind them, but even the crowd started to quieten a little bit, thinking they start to get nervous about the whole situation. So, you know, they, they didn't prepare right for this game and they got what they deserved. And we do like seeing them crying afterwards when they underestimate this and they put us down and think they're going to win easily. I mean, that, that does stick to mind about Uruguay, absolutely. And that's exactly what I felt as well, that they underestimated us. They, they had this sense of party already beforehand thinking right we've got this in the bag we're just gonna have to turn up and, and we'll win this game and there's nothing better than shoving it back in their face did you enjoy that there's so much more so why not hit subscribe and download the optus sport app